Hey, everybody. Welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And welcome to episode three. Woohoo! Thank you <laughs> to every single one of you who has left a rating and a review. I have one in front of me. You want to hear it? I do. So this review is titled Guilt-Free Girlfriend Time, and it says, I needed this right now as a source of diversion from doom scrolling. Fun and totally relatable. Lynn Aww. in California, thank you. Made our day. Lynn, that's so nice. Thank you so much. I'm now, smiling. <laughs> me too. It doesn't take much. <laughs> no, it doesn't. If you want to find more from us, you can always find us at MeganandWendy.com, and that will take you to all of the places that you can find us. Or you can uh, email us at MeganandWendy at gmail.com. Yeah, say hi, ask a question, make a show request. Mm, yeah. We have had a busy week. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I'm we- so tired. I've never been so exhausted from being on my computer. <laughs> I swear. I feel like I ran a marathon this week. We dropped nearly 20 gift guides this week. Very... And I say nearly 20 because by the time this show goes live, I think we'll be at 20. Well, we published on one single day. It was 16, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there's a couple more that didn't make that cutoff date. And those will be coming out in the next couple of days. 16 gift guides on one day. Now, what's a gift guide? Right. (laughs) You know, Megan, before I met you, I don't think I knew what a gift guide was. (laughs) Well, look, you know I love the holidays. You know gifts are my love language. And so I really like writing a gift guide, which, you know, the explanation is in the name. It's a list of gifts that we think people would enjoy getting. Mm -hmm. And... Last year, we started the trend of doing very kind of focused gift guides. Instead of writing one guide with a bunch of holiday ideas, we really niche down (laughs) and we break them apart. So if you are buying for a teen or a grandparent or a reader or someone who loves to putter in their garden. Like me? Yes. (laughs) Someone who loves houseplants or candy. If you're looking for stocking stuffers, you guys, there are so many gift guides with fun ideas. I really love writing them. I like it too. I'm just tired. (laughs) I like them because I like holiday shopping. So it just feels like one extended shopping session. I'm like just shopping for all of these people. The downfall is, of course, that then I find so many things that I want for myself. Uh, Same. Do you have a favorite gift guide? I do. Tell me. It's it's the gift guide for homebodies. I love It it. It's, and it's perfect for now because aren't we all homebodies? Now? Totally. That's why I was like, you know, I wrote in there about how, yes, we all want to get out and do things and go to crowd pleasing events, but until we can do it safely, hey, here's a whole bunch of gifts to buy somebody who's home. Absolutely. If you're going to be home, enjoy it. Live your best yeah. at home life. <laughs> what about you? I had a lot of fun writing the teenager's gift guide. Um, I have a teen. Mm. Wendy has a teen. They're hard to shop for. But I do think Mm. we found some fun stuff in there. And, uh, you know, if you were to ask my teenager, he just wants money and gift cards. And I can certainly understand that desire, but we don't go anywhere right now. So what are you going to spend your money on, A? And B, look, I have turned into my mother. I like people (laughs) to have a gift to open. (laughs) I know. That's the problem with gift cards for me is like gifting a gift card. I feel like you have to like pair it with something to make it excitable for them to open. Do you yes. Know? Just handing yeah. them a card. I think they might enjoy. <laughs> yeah. But I like the people to go home with a thing. I'm curious. You know, you said your teenager just wants gift cards and money. But for what? Like, what well, would he buy? Right now, nothing. And I think even he knows that because he hasn't spent any money in 2020. You know, oh, last okay. year he was, you know, he was walking across the street after school on Fridays and they would get smoothies or whatever. So oh, he wanted yeah. that kind of gift card. Yeah. But that's not happening. He doesn't go to school. Right. <laughs> so he's not walking anywhere with anybody. I think just the idea of like hoarding yeah. <laughs> money and gift cards yeah. and having them there when you're ready. Got this cash money on hand. That's That's all he wants. Uh, Let me ask you a question, and you don't have to answer it honestly. Um, (laughs) Well, I I don't know who listens to this, and I know you don't want to, like, hurt any feelings or anything, but 
were you ever as a young teenager or even an older teenager, even a young adult, were you ever embarrassed of your mom? I will answer this honestly. And I will say that I think, well, first of all, 12 and 13 were very hard years for my mom and I. And I don't think we had a good relationship until I was 25. Mm -hmm. But being embarrassed, I think I was more just embarrassed by the fact that I had parents Right? Like that they existed. <laughs> you know that feeling? Yeah. You're like, I would just like them to exist in the background and nobody needs to notice them. <laughs> or, um, there wasn't specific things that they did that I found embarrassing. Um, but I kind of just wanted to be like this person who just <laughs> emerged fully formed into the world and nobody else had anything to do with it. Right. But you weren't embarrassed about anything like specific about them. You just want wanted independence from this parental unit. Yeah, I wasn't embarrassed that I can recall yeah. about anything specific that they did. Although my mom is pretty like quiet and mellow, so you know, she's not like the mom hanging out the car window <laughs> at pickup blaring whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll get there. I'm I'm getting to that. Um so for me, it, I have a hard time admitting this cuz I was really embarrassed of my mom, uh, especially as like a teenager and a young adult. The way she talked, I I don't want to go through the whole list, but I was like very embarrassed. And now I like struggle feeling emotional about that because she died about four years ago. And so it's like I didn't celebrate her for who she was. You know, I just Mm -hmm. like, oh, so... Anyway, that's been weighing heavy on me for some reason. But on top of that, my own daughter, and I think this is where it comes from. My own daughter, I can tell, is super embarrassed of me. And I'm having a really hard time with that because I feel like we always had this, like, relationship where, like, she adored her mom. And, you know, she's not the perfect kid, but we got along. You know, Right, she liked you. Right. And now she just doesn't want anything to do with me. She's like full of side eye and moody size. And the one particular issue that keeps coming up is, and I know it's going to sound so stupid, but she doesn't like when I sing in the car, like along to the music, which Mm -hmm. is, which is so stupid because I love to sing in the car. Like that brings me such joy. And she has gone to such lengths of turning off the radio, changing the station. Ugh, I don't want to hear you sing. And it hurts <laughs> my feelings. So I will say two things. Okay. One, and I know that it's hard to understand this when you're in it, but it is, and you know this, but it's 100% the age. You know, when I was 12 and 13, my mom would say to my dad, tell Megan dinner's ready because if I tell her, she'll argue with me. Like that was just <laughs> yeah. our relationship. She couldn't say anything to me that I would hear, right? Right. The other thing is I have a 13-year-old and he is extremely embarrassed by me. We, our mailman's name is Sal. And the other day we're driving down the street and the mailman was delivering mail. My car windows are up. Sal can't hear me, but we happened to pass him. <laughs> I don't know why. I, as we drove by, I said, what up, Sal? And my son, <laughs> if the car could have absorbed him, he would have just become one with the car seat. And I thought, why are, why are you so embarrassed? Because He can't hear me. You're the only person who knows I just did that. He was mortified. And we were on a walk a couple days later, and we happened to see the mailman. I was like, oh, should I say hi? And he walked so far ahead of me. (laughs) And right now, I'm choosing to just find it funny because the reality is deep, deep, deep down he does still love me and I think I know what I was like at that age so I don't know at this point I just find it amusing that he finds me so embarrassing but I do get mad when he tells me not to sing because no sir (laughs) right okay first of all I want okay my feelings are hurt about it but then on the other hand I want to be like hey dude this is my car and my radio station I had to listen to my parents' music in their car when I was growing up, so... Hello, talk radio for my entire youth. (laughs) Well, me too. I mean, I do enjoy talk radio and listening to podcasts in the car, too, but I don't typically listen to those when she's in the car, but... You know, every once in a while, I will let her listen. 
we will listen collectively to whatever she wants to listen to, you know? I can't help it if I know the songs. <laughs> so, like, come on, kid! Look, I would absolutely not apologize for listening to your own music. And in my car, it's the same way. Look, sometimes I let them choose the music, but if I've turned something on, it's okay if they don't like it. You know, sometimes they moan or they make comments from the backseat. I'm like, it is my car. I'm taking you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. You're not in charge here. My husband likes to say that that our house is not a democracy. So, you know, when you buy the car and, you know, you listen to whatever music you want. Yeah, maybe I should start doing that. The thing that I don't want to happen is, like, her to bring her own, like, uh, iPod or phone and listen to whatever she wants to listen to, like, via headphones. Because then that feels like a huge disconnect. You know what I mean? If we're, like, in the same car and she's completely ignoring me, like, I don't want to get there. Right. And we don't let the kids do that either. I feel like they have, I mean, if we run a long road trip, fine. But, you know, running errands or to school, I feel like you can be in this space with me and be present. You have plenty of time at home to listen to your own stuff. So I'm just going to listen to my own radio stations and I'm going to sing my heart out. I'll let you know how it, I'll let you know how it goes. I mean, she's going to hate it. Prepare yourself for that. Oh, okay. But I think there's something to be said for setting the tone. I'm going to do this. You don't have to like it, but you don't get to make the decision about what's going to happen here. Okay. <laughs> Guys, if you have thoughts on our parenting. <laughs> parenting is hard. Oh, yeah, is. I would I would love to hear if anybody else has any thoughts on this or uh, stories. Please email us. I would love to read them. I want to know that I'm not alone. Yes, please tell us that your teens find you horrifically embarrassing. <laughs> so on a lighter note, have you been to a Starbucks lately? Uh, not in a couple of weeks, no. Okay, so my local Starbucks has just introduced curbside pickup. Oh, I have questions. (laughs) Go ahead. So I saw someone talk about this on Instagram (laughs) maybe a week ago, and I immediately went into my Starbucks app to see if I could figure out if my stores had it. And I went through like the order placing process, but there was never an option to choose curbside or in store. So is that what happens? Do you? They show you two different options in the app? Yes. So after you place your order, it will say curbside available at your oh, store. So, so then you when have you... to get through the entire order placing process. Yes, exactly. Oh. And then when you get to your store, my particular store has four parking stalls. And when you get there, then you select what stall you're in and then they'll come out. That's and give amazing. It to you. Here's the deal. Why didn't they have this when I had a baby in the car? Right. You know? I would drive two cities over to go to a drive through Starbucks with my ba- a sleepy baby in the car because I needed a coffee. But I don't understand, like, the introduction of it. Like, why now? Because of COVID? I'm sure that's it. Because the last time I was in a Starbucks, I would always do mobile. But even that, I was in the store waiting for quite a while, and the waiting area was pretty full. And, you know, there's no furniture in my Starbucks right now, Mm -hmm. so there's a lot more open space. But I I would imagine they're just trying to get people in there, and they have to be doing less business because the number of people who are no longer stopping on their way to work or who just aren't out as much, I have to imagine the business is down and they got to get people in there. So if it means they'll bring it out to your car in a store that doesn't have a drive through because none of my regularly frequented Starbucks have drive throughs Right, me either. Yeah, I think they're just trying to grab that business where they can. Yeah, I mean, I personally like it. I feel kind of like a jerk when I pull up because I can't get out of my car and walk two steps into the door to get my drink. But um, I do enjoy its convenience. I also feel a little bit... Um, weird about tipping they have a tip jar on their tray and since doing it I have tipped them because I feel like okay they're providing the service they're coming to my car if I was in a restaurant and somebody brought something to my table I would typically tip them I don't typically tip when I'm inside the Starbucks do you typically no um for counter pickup food service I cross the board I typically do not tip um however I think you can tip within the Starbucks app. Have you noticed that? Am I making that up? No. Um, And sometimes, you know, if I'm looking at my order after I've placed it, it'll say tipping available for the next, it's like a limited amount of time you can add a tip. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that prompt, I'm like, well, it's right in front of me. Maybe I'll just, you know, tap to add. It's like when they're asking me to do it, (laughs) I'm more likely to do it. But typically I do not tip 
for counter service. But I would be tempted to tip for someone bringing it to my car. Although, right. do they really want your physical cash? I guess um, maybe then they it would go directly to them. They've taken it from me. Yeah. So. I guess if they have the tip jar on their tray. Right. I have a funny story. I have been through maybe like three drive throughs in the past six or seven months. But my first COVID drive through experience... You know, they're, all our protocols are different now. And they're taking my order. And I, for some reason, had cash and not a card, which was a bozo move. But they had a cup at the end of their order taking <laughs> for my cash. And oh I my God. fully missed the cup and threw it. It dropped it on, oh my gosh, on their keyboard where they were taking my order. And I was <laughs> mortified. And I already like didn't really know the rules. I was like, should I be wearing a mask? I was. Because I figure if they're wearing a mask, I should also be wearing a mask while I'm talking Uh to them. But I don't like situations where I don't fully understand the rules and I got flustered and the money went in the wrong place. And now I feel like I can never go to that particular drive through again. Oh my God. They have your picture up. This chick Uh, They probably do. (laughs) She pays with cash. Today's episode of Long Story Short is brought to you by the Thank your delivery drivers. Printable, available at MeganandWendy.com. Your delivery drivers are working harder now more than ever. They're delivering your ballots to where they need to go. They're delivering the gifts that you've ordered for the holidays. They're delivering your groceries in some cases. They are working their tails off. So why not say thank you and put out a little snack with treats and a drink and let them know how much you appreciate their hard work and keeping your house running these days. You can get the printable for free. We'll link it in our show notes. And we'd love to see when people post the pictures of their printables and their little snack baskets on their front porch. You can tag us on Instagram. In today's episode, we wanted to talk about skincare. We're going to talk about our routine, some of our current favorite products, and we're even going to get into some tips for dealing with mask knee. First things first. Do you consider yourself a person who has a skincare routine? Um, well, you know. <laughs> Tell the people. I get real lazy in the evening and I often go to bed without washing my face. Still? Yes. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so bad. You know, I am a highly lazy person. I will admit that. But for some reason, I wash my face every single night. And I say this as a person who is sitting in front of two very full laundry baskets. So I am not a person who has my life together, but I (laughs) cannot go to bed without washing my face. I I feel like a disgusting person. I mean, really, because when I wake up in the morning, I look like I've been out on a bender. I look (laughs) awful in the morning. My skin is so mad at me in the morning. What it's, about, like, would even keeping skincare wipes on your nightstand help or no? No. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> so has it gotten better or worse in COVID times? It's It's been about the same. <laughs> I would say m- mine has been about the same. I've heard people say, like, it's it's fallen apart because they don't have the motivation to do it. And I've heard people say they've gone all in because they have the time. And why not have beautiful skin if you're going to be home all the time? I'd say mine has stayed pretty consistent. When you do wash your face yeah, at night or, mm-hmm. yeah, let's do night. Do you have a consistent routine or is there like, well, okay, so for me, I always wash my face. Always. Everything else is optional, even moisturizing. On my laziest nights, I will wash my face and do nothing else. And then there are degrees to which I will add to my skincare routine, depending on the level I feel invested in, right. in so that if you- night. If you want to spend five minutes or 35 minutes, right? Right. Am I going to do a mask? Am I going to dig into the serums? Am I going to, you know, get all the stuff out? I might moisturize. Am I also going to do an eye cream? (laughs) Um, There are various levels for me, depending on my motivation for that day. So I, uh, okay, so if I were to wash my face, and I'm, look, I don't wash my face maybe five nights a week. There's two nights a week that I put some effort out there. And then it takes a long time. And then the next night I go, "Eh, I don't want to do that again, you know? (laughs) So maybe if I just got down to the basics of just washing it off, maybe I could uh, do it more regularly. But yes, I have a uh, cabinet full of very nice 
drugstore and high-end products that I love. I just don't use them on a regular basis. Yeah. Why don't we talk about the products we are currently using and enjoying? Why don't we like dig into the nitty-gritty okay. of our routines? Right. Do What cleanser are you currently using? Do you love it? Do you like it? Talk to me. Okay. I don't love it. It's a drugstore mm. brand. It's um, La Rocher-Posay. Is that how... Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Okay. Um, so I use that cleanser. It comes in like a pump, pump situation. I like that. It's a, it's okay. Like n- no cleanser blows my mind. Do you have a cleanser that blows your mind? I wouldn't say the cleanser I use blows my mind, but it is effective. So I have used for years the Cetaphil daily facial cleanser. And I need to make the distinction that it is not the gentle cleanser, which is that weird consistency, non-foaming cleanser that... People often recommend people with sensitive skin. I that's not. I mean, it's like the consistency of semen. I do not enjoy what? the <laughs> gentle Gross. cleanser. What? The daily facial cleanser from Cetaphil is a foaming cleanser, and it removes my makeup, leaves my skin feeling clean. It does not cause me to break out. I have tried many other cleansers that my skin just doesn't enjoy, and I'm sure there are plenty of cleansers that would work for me, but I'm not super interested in like the journey of trying, not liking, returning or wasting money or this works. And so while there may be something that is amazing out there, Mm -hmm. I feel like there's something that I'm going to put on my face and then wash right off and it does the job. I'm happy with it. Uh, What about a moisturizer? Now I know what you're going to say about mine, but you tell me about yours. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, my daughter uses that moisturizer the one that you're going to talk about <laughs> okay so at nighttime I don't really have a moisturizer that I would go to um it's more like facial oil or um something like that I don't have like a heavy nighttime moisturizer do I don't have a daytime I moisturizer that you use I do again La Roche Posay mm-hmm it's a moisturizer sunscreen duo. I know a lot of people say that you should use separate ones, but I particularly like this one. And I don't know if I would reach for another sunscreen on top of a moisturizer for my personal use. Do you know? Right. I, I have absolutely heard that you should separate your moisturizer and your sunscreen. But also, if you're not going to use sunscreen separately, then go ahead and combine them because <laughs> not using is worse, right? I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I have been a longtime user of the CeraVe moisturizer in the blue bottle, and it does not specifically say (laughs) that it is a face moisturizer. However, uh, Wendy at one point called me and she's like, I think you're using body lotion on your face. (laughs) However, I did a little bit of a deep dive. That blue bottle moisturizer is kind of their original moisturizer. They have since diversified their brand, and they have an AM moisturizer and a PM moisturizer, and all these other types of moisturizer. That is a very basic moisturizer. It does not cause my skin to break out. I have oily skin and it does not leave me feeling oily or heavy. My makeup goes on nicely over it. So if it is in fact a body lotion, all I know is it works on my skin. It is unscented. It is light. It does the job. For a slightly higher end moisturizer though, I really liked this summer, the Super Goop Super Screen, which is a moisturizer and sunscreen combined, and it's Mm -hmm. SPF 40, and I loved that this summer. The jar I had is gone, so I've gone back to my CeraVe, but when I needed a good daily sunscreen in the summer, I really liked that one. So do you wear sunscreen? Because the CeraVe doesn't have SPF in it, does it? It does not. Um, I do typically wear a sunscreen every day. Lately, I've been using Super Goop's Glow Screen, Mm -hmm. um, and it has, as the name suggests, uh, kind of a glowy tint. It's like kind of wearing a glowy primer, and I really love that uh, under foundation. But yes, I will typically wear some combination of moisturizer and sunscreen. I bought, in early spring, Sephora's uh, sun care sampler that they always yeah. sell, you know, yeah. because I was really excited about all the vacations I was going to be taking and I <laughs> wanted to have all these little mini travel sunscreens. And then I just, you know, used them in my backyard all summer long. So <laughs> I've been working my way through all of those, but I'm super fair. So if I'm going to be spending any time outside, 
I wear a sunscreen on my face. Well, good for you. I mean, so do I. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I mean, that's great. Everybody should wear sunscreen. <laughs> no, okay. I want to talk about lip balm because I consider this skincare. Um, yes, it's on your face. It is yes. skin. I I have a fancy lip balm, and I. You know, I go like real drugstore with my cleanser and my moisturizer, but I am in love. <laughs> with what? Tell me. With this lip mask. It's the Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask, and it comes in a jar, and it comes with a little plastic spatula for applying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you use that? Well, I can't even mm-hmm. get makeup off my face. I would never use a spatula to put lip balm on. <laughs> I do because I don't like I don't like dipping my finger into a okay. pot of lip balm. Fair. And it's it's a kind of a jelly consistency. It feels amazing. It's similar to the Bite Agave lip mask, but I like the Tatcha one better. It is expensive for a lip balm. Yeah, that's fancy. How much is that? It's $28, but I bought this in February, and it is almost gone, and I use it every single night, and occasionally I'll apply during the day. I would think, I think for me, it was an investment that was well worth it because I've used it every single day, see noticeable results. I'll be interested to use it through the winter when things get a little bit drier, but I am going to repurchase this because I, prior to this, was an Aquaphor user, Aquaphor at night. And I do like that. I mean, I think it's especially for, you know, dry lips, but I love this. And it's a little more decadent than, you know, that little plastic tube of Aquaphor. What can I say? Well, I guess it feels special if you're putting it on before you go to bed, right? Like you're doing something special for yourself. I don't know. So the lip balm, I like, like, I have a bazillion chapsticks like everywhere. I like chapstick. I like Burt's Bees. I have one somewhere everywhere, stash somewhere. But my go-to is the Laneige Sleep Sleep Mask, I think. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask is what it's called. And um I wear it I wear it during the day. You know, I can yeah. it doesn't have to be exclusive to nighttime. I was just looking it up too. It's twenty two dollars. I didn't realize it was that expensive. And I have the original berry, but they have like six other I don't want to say flavors, scents, whatever they're called. But I love it. Ooh, diversified. They- they have a mint cocoa. I'm sure you'll love oh, that one. <laughs> I got excited about mint and then you added the cocoa. Yeah, nope. Nope. Cocoa. The chocolate doesn't do it for me. <laughs> I have I mean, the Laneige ahead. lip glosses that you gave me that are like yeah. a glossy balm. And I love those during the I day. Like, they feel great on. I use those all the time too. I like those a lot. All right. Let's talk uh, skin treatments. I'm thinking like um, like chemical exfoliators, that yeah. sort of thing. Mm-hmm, Let's talk mm-hmm. about those. Mm-hmm. Do you have any that you love? Well, see, I'm real scared of those because <laughs> I always feel like more the better. And I know it's, <laughs> I know it's less is more is is <laughs> how you should be using it. But, you know, when you're putting a pea size drop of something, I'm like, how's that working? I need a quarter size. And then I wake up to not so great results. So I'm very hesitant to use anything exciting. Well, I use, I would say, very mild forms of that, like the Pixi Glow Tonic. Mm, okay. Um, that's an exfoliating toner. It's glycolic acid. Um, I really like that in the morning. Uh, I feel like it brightens my skin a little bit. I also like the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. Mm-hmm. Those are- and those I use typically at night. I don't know why. I use one at night and one in the morning. I wouldn't typically use those like in the same. I would rotate those in and out of my routine. I recently tried Curology. What is um, that? Is that <gasps> where you put your whatever in online and then they send you a specialized product? Yeah, it's like custom Ooh. skincare. And so I had seen a ton of ads, but I hadn't found any information that wasn't blatantly a sponsored ad from an influencer. And look, I'm of course not above a sponsored ad, but I wanted the real deal. So Curology, at the time that I used it, they had a four ninety five dollars promo. So you just basically pay shipping and you get their cleanser, their moisturizer, and then a treatment that is custom designed for you. And I, for $5, I'm all in, right? And so sure. you fill in all of your skincare current routines, you fill in your concerns, and then you have to send them pictures of your skin. Mm-hmm. And then they come back with a custom serum, basically, treatment for you. Um, mine has niacinamide, clindamycin, and zinc pyrithione. I will say the cleanser and the moisturizer 
not worth it. There is an option mm. within the order. You can just get the custom treatment or you can add on. And they're just very basic cleanser moisturizer. They have an oily skin and a dry skin moisturizer. And the cleanser is the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. I found them to be fine. Nothing to write home about. Certainly not worth adding to future orders. But the treatment was great. I mean, my skin cleared up. It's brighter. The redness is gone. I was very impressed. And then they check in with you and they ask you to send an updated photo so they can adjust things. I never did any of that. Um, (laughs) Well, because I was really happy with it. Um, I'm not sure that mine needed adjustment. Uh Um, And they have two different sizes that you can order. So because I'm not always using the treatment every night and I just know me, I was reordering the smaller size bottle, which would last me about six to eight weeks. And it's, um, I think, $19.95 for the smaller size bottle. So For something that's lasting that long um, and was effective, I was very pleased with it. So I don't don't think that that is that expensive. No. I mean, when you look at something like a Good Jeans, you know, from Sunday Riley, which is $100, and I loved it, but also hard to justify. For sure. (laughs) All the time. If you are someone who has no idea where to start, I think it's a worth a try. It, they tell you the active ingredients and then you can kind of play around because like the ordinary makes a really affordable niacinamide. So I could maybe try that out. You know, I can use the information that they've given me with this custom formula to try yeah. other products now that I know what works for my skin. Mm, very interesting. All right. Let's talk about mask me. Oh, okay. Are you dealing with this? Have you had I'd- this problem? I don't really have a problem with it. And I wear a mask, just to clarify, but I don't really have a problem with it. Well, that's good. Um, So that is step one, wear clean masks. And if you are a person who has to wear a mask all day for work, consider having multiple masks on hand, Without changing the them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, especially if you're prone to breakouts, it's an easy thing to do to make sure you're keeping the fabric that is touching your skin all day as clean as possible. Now, washing your masks. Mm -hmm. Our friend Amira Martin said something on Instagram that blew my little mind about mask washing. (laughs) What? She she said two things. First, she said that she always hand washes her masks as opposed to putting them in a lingerie bag in the washing machine because she doesn't like the idea of like your laundry that touches your butt also touching the laundry that oh touches your face. Oh my god, I hadn't even thought of that. Right? <laughs> So, so that was step one. And I was like, well, now I'm hand washing my masks from here on out. And it's actually very quick to hand wash masks because the deal with COVID is very easily killed by soapy water. Like uh-huh. soap kills COVID very effectively. You don't need to use harsh chemicals to be washing your masks. You just need to be washing them with a good soap. And the other suggestion Amira made is to use face wash to cleanse your masks. Especially yeah. if you are prone to breakouts and you have sensitive skin, you don't necessarily need to be using the harsh detergent that you're using on your sheets. Yeah. Uh, it is worth trying if you are experiencing mask knee because using a gentle cleanser with your masks in hot soapy water will still get them nice and clean, but then you're not having to deal with potential irritants on your mask, rubbing on your skin all day. That's so smart. Isn't it? She's a genius. I mean, now I can't get rid of the visual of my face mask floating around in poop water. <laughs> you know? I know. It's so gross. Now, all when right. it comes to your skincare routine, I have to admit, when I wash my face, not all face washing sessions are created equally. Sometimes it's like five or six seconds of just like trying to get my face clean enough so I feel I can go to bed. That's not enough. <laughs> That's not going to break everything down that's on your face. If you're using a cleanser, spend 30 seconds massaging it into your face. Because if you have five, you have 30 seconds. You just do. Are you telling me personally? I'm telling me. (laughs) Rub it in. Give it the chance to break down. You don't need to be aggressive. Just make sure you're getting all over your face in the little curve by your nose, right? You know, get break everything down. It makes a big difference. Not even changing your cleanser, just changing the amount of time you spend cleansing your face. And, you know, if you're a person who wears a lot of makeup, I would consider either a double cleanse, I'm too lazy for, 
<laughs> or a swipe with micellar water yeah. after yeah. you've cleansed to make sure you've gotten everything off your face. I would also consider adding a product with benzoyl peroxide. I found a great list that we'll link in our show notes because that's going to kind of attack the acne bacteria in your skin mm-hmm. to help fight that. So are you breaking out from your masks? Every once in a while, but the truth is I don't go out that often. Yeah. (laughs) And when I do, you know, I'm not going into work. So it's typically I'm not wearing a mask for more than an hour at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think that helps. But plenty of people are going to work, going to school, having to spend a lot of time in a mask for a number of reasons. And I think the more amount of time you spend in a mask, the greater the chances that your skin is going to be irritated. And also, I think some people are breaking out just from the irritation of the mask rubbing on their skin. Yeah. So a good moisturizer will help, you know, build up your skins, give you a good barrier. I hadn't thought about kids wearing masks to school. This is a great practice to start, um, you know, for tweens and teens who wear masks all day at school to get them to clean their face a little bit better after the school day. You know, yeah. I mean, at the I would think at the very least, maybe using a face wipe because uh-huh. they're not going to want to come home and wash their face. Let's be I honest. Know. And when you do get a breakout, you know, my very favorite thing that I'm so sad didn't exist when we were teens. What's what? Pimple patches. Oh, they're amazing. Absolutely if you, amazing. If you haven't had a chance to use them, there's a ton of brands that make them. My favorite is the Rail brand available on Amazon, but you can find them in the drugs. I mean, I think even Clearasil makes them now. Oh, do they? Yeah. And they're just a small clear patch that you put on your skin and it sucks the gunk out of a breakout Ooh. overnight. It's <laughs> truly disgusting, but it works. <laughs> It's time for Megan and Wendy Approved, where we're each going to share something we're loving this week. Okay. Can I tell you? Please. I've had this item since early in quarantine. It was an early quarantine purchase. It is the Gourmilla 5-Quart Digital Air Fryer, and it is (gasps) the bomb. It is so the bomb, and I'm going to tell you what I made in it last night. Please. So last night I made salmon, and to avoid this stinky fish smell in my house, I took my air fryer outside, (gasps) and I put my salmon in the air fryer, 12 minutes, perfectly cooked. It was so dang good. I love this air fryer. I can't get enough of it. I know some people put their I'm not, pot pot in the backyard it, or the garage. Uh, <laughs> oh. So you don't. Oh, I like, like that idea. Yes. Like that. Yes, but the air fryer too outside. Twelve minutes done, and it was delicious. Espe- especially when you're cooking something like fish. Now, if right. I make taquitos in the house, I'll do that <laughs> in the air fryer, no problem. But I make so many things. We do sweet potato fries. We do pepperoni chips. We make empanadas, taquitos, so many things. It's so versatile. I'm in love with the air fryer. You have a toaster oven, don't you? Yes, but I've never used it for anything but actually toasting things. I don't use it like the oven part. Got it. So what I love about the air fryer is that, and this is not an ad, I swear (laughs) to God. What I love about it is that I could um, warm things up the next day. Oh, yes, I have heard, like, leftovers are not going to get soggy in the microwave. Exactly. It's so great. Like, if I want to take home fries from a restaurant, those are terrible the next day. But I put them in my air fryer. I got crispy fries again. I freaking Who love has it. fries left over at a restaurant is what I want to know. Uh, my friend Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, my favorite this week is a book I just finished, and I actually finished it at 3 o'clock this morning because I woke up at 1 and could not go back to sleep. Oh. And I was so glad to have a good book to read. And that book is Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. And it is a little bit spooky, perfect for this time of year. That's so unlike you. It is, but it's not scary. I don't do scary. It was not hard to read in the middle of the night. I wasn't worried about not being able to sleep because I already couldn't sleep. But it was, I saw it recommended in my book circles several times recently. And it's the story of an eccentric billionaire who dies and creates this game And the prize is kind of unknown, but he's a billionaire, so people are pretty excited about what it might be. And that's not the part that I really like, though. I'm not really into, like, 
the game, the mystery. I'm not good at solving that sort of thing. What I liked, there are four main characters. They're all kind of semi-related and they all have their own secrets and their own motivation for playing. And I was really into the characters and I was really into their stories. And I really enjoyed this book. And yes, I would say it's typically a bit of a departure from what I've been reading, especially my pandemic reading, which has been very like light, fluffy romance. (laughs) Let me just Mm -hmm. fly through a book that doesn't require anything of me. But the author is Kate Raculia. I enjoyed it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to Long Story Short, the podcast. We would love it if you would leave us a rating or a review and we'll see you next week. Bye. (laughs)